Hello, friends and neighbors. We're back here talking dynamics again today. We're moving on. We're talking about curvilinear motion. Everything we've been talking about so far has been in a straight line. We're having acceleration either forwards, backwards, or acceleration down due to gravity or something like that. But now we're changing it up. We're getting curvilinear. That means we're going around corners, okay? So when we're talking about a particle moving in space now, we might be talking about that particle moving about some kind of curvilinear path. But we're, you know, everything we're going to do in this course, we're going to talk about kind of snapshot dynamics. What's happening at that point uh, on the path? And so what you have here is basically at this point, ah, oh, my blue pin, no good. Okay, at this point on the curve, uh, we would have some kind of some kind of radius there. That's probably too big, isn't it? But maybe there. Okay, so there's some radius there. Uh, there may be a different radius for over here. Uh, there's a, a, a smaller radius right there and another one over here, right? So everywhere on that curve, we could at that one point define some radius um, that that particle's moving around. And we call that uh, rho, okay? So that's the Greek letter rho. And all that is is the radius of curvature at that point, okay? So radius of curvature, curvature, okay? And so we'll see rho in some new equations here. So what we're going to have now is acceleration, velocity, not in a straight line, but around a curve. So what's going to change? All right, so number one, let's say that I have a body. Look at that. I've got a, a golf ball. It looks like a, or is it a soccer ball? <laughs> okay, so I've got this traveling in a circle path without hitting myself in the head here. Okay. What's happening to that ball as it travels in a circular path? Maybe I'm getting faster, I'm speeding up, it's accelerating, or it's slowing down, okay? So at any point on that path as it's going around, I have acceleration, okay? Now I have two kinds of acceleration. I have, let me get a better marker here. I have this kind of acceleration. So I'm moving around, a, let's say, a curve. That particle, or there's my golf ball, okay? Number one, Velocity, like what's the speed of the golf ball at that point, is always tangential to the curve. So if this is a, if it makes a big circle here as I was spinning it around, the velocity, like if I'm spinning this around, if that string ever broke, right, where would the golf ball go as soon as the string broke? Tangential to the path. It will continue moving in a tangential direction. Now, acceleration is kind of the same thing. As it's going around, as I change the speed of the ball, as I sped it up or slowed it down, acceleration had kind of a, a tangential component there, okay? But it also has one more component that is not maybe so intuitive to us, and that is it also has an acceleration this way, and it's called normal acceleration towards the center. And if you think about it, that ball right, is, is creating a tension in that rope. It's tight right there where I'm swinging it. The faster I swing it, the harder I have to hold it to keep myself from whacking myself there because it's making an acceleration this way, okay? And that force that's pulling that out, right, that force is called uh, centripetal force. Okay, I have it written right here. You've, you've heard the word centripetal force, but you've also heard the word centrifugal or centrifugal force. So what's the difference in centripetal and centrifugal? Well, centripetal is that force of, here's the ball, right? That force that's pulling it towards the center. That is the tension in the string. As I swing this around, that's that tension in the spring, in the string rather. That is the centripetal force. But then again, so what is centrifugal force? Centrifugal force is here. Centrifugal, centrifugal. And this is centripetal, uh, P-E-T-A-L, there you go. So they're kind of the same thing. The centrifugal force is kind of an observed force. If you've ever been on a, on a uh, merry-go-round and you're spinning around, that force that's making you want to fly off of there, that's what you observe a force acting on you. We would call that centrifugal force. The centripetal force would be the force that, that you're generating if you're I don't know, you're holding a rope to the center of that. That would be the, the centripetal force. So they're very closely related. And um, really, truly, you could use either one and, and be correct because they're so closely related to each other. Um, so let's talk acceleration for a minute more. 
So we have these two components of acceleration, a normal and a tangential. So what would be the total or resultant uh, acceleration? So just like any other vector, if we're and, and acceleration is a vector, right? It has magnitude, it has direction. If I want to find out what that resultant is, we've done this about a million times, haven't we? Let's call that the acceleration resultant. Well, it's simple, right? Pythagorean theorem will do it. It's a t squared plus a n squared square root. And I have that written right there, okay? So here's some things. And then the other thing is, is how do you calculate this normal acceleration? Normal acceleration is the velocity squared divided by rho, that radius of curvature, okay? So, and remember velocity, like we said, remember swinging around, is always tangential to the curve, so it's always tangential. The tangential acceleration in, the, in, in most dynamics problem is given to you in the problem. So, um, let's see if we can calculate this. Let's work a problem. I got one over here, right? Okay, so let's erase all this. Okay, kind of a whirlwind of information there, wasn't it? So let's, let's, let's say we have this. We have a car, and he's traveling around a curve there, okay? And all that we're given is, is that his resultant, we could, we could put a little R right there, right? His resultant acceleration, we're given that. Here's tangential, so at that point on the curve, right, that's the tangent, and then here's that normal acceleration. So given the auto has a speed of 80 feet per second, and that is what? That's V, right? So V equals 80 feet per second, okay? And has an acceleration of 10 feet per second in the direction shown, or per second squared, sorry. And that's here, okay? So that's 10 feet per second squared. So we can call that AR equals 10 feet per second squared. So find the radius of curvature. Okay, that's easy. That's a... Uh, that's rho, all right, and, um, and then find the tangential component of A. So let's see if we can do that. So here's the particle. Here is the uh, A tangential. Here is A normal, and here is that resultant. Can we just tilt that? Will that, will that mess you up if we just tilted that a little bit? Let's just tilt it. Maybe that'll make it easier. I don't know why tilting makes it easier, but it kind of does, doesn't it? So there's my A normal, there's my A tangential, and there is my A resultant. Okay, and they tell me that this is 30 degrees. Now, if this is 10 feet per second squared, gosh, I wonder what that up there is. Look, it's just a triangle, isn't it? This is A N, this is A T, okay? So AT is just going to be nothing more than 10 times the cosine of 30. We know that the cosine of 30 is 0.866, right? So times 10. So AT, the tangential acceleration, which is like this part right here that we wanted to know, is uh, 8.66 feet per second squared. So that's one of the answers that we're looking for right there. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Now they ask us about this normal one here, kind of in a weird way. They ask us, what is, what is rho? Hey, but you know what? We know this side over here, right? A n, a n is just gonna be what? If that's cosine, then this side's gotta be sine. So this is 10 sine 30, which is five. So a n equals five feet per second squared. So let's see, let's use, Let's use this equation here and solve for rho then, right? So uh, five feet per second squared is equal to velocity. Oh, we don't know, oh, we do know velocity. It's 80 feet per second. So equals 80 squared. All our units are constant here, right? So they're all gonna cancel out, right? And then down here, there's rho. Oh, that's easy, right? Uh, rho is equal to 80 squared divided by five. Let me get my handy, handy dandy calculator. Here we go, on 80 squared equals, divided by five equals 1,280 feet, okay? And that is, that's how far 
from here over to the center of that, if that, if that curve made a big circle, uh, that's what the radius or rho would be, okay? So a few new topics, uh, and uh, we'll do another one of these. Hope that helps.